Hey everyone, assalamu alaikum. This is Om Ali. So I'm in my sewing room um, doing a project. And I was like, you know what? Let me just make a quick video. It's not going to be in depth or anything like that. It's a super, super easy, straightforward tutorial. So I am making a DPN holder. So if you're familiar with DPNs, they are pretty much just um, a set of uh, five or four um, knitting needles uh, that you use to ultimately make a round. So I am using DPNs on my new Cast It On project, which is the Spring, spring Sorrel Top by Woolen Pine. Keeping it in a project bag or leaving it out can kind of be a bit tricky. So typically when you stash away your DPNs, you're going to kind of fold it in half like this. Um, but, you know, depending on how you have it in your project bag or whatever, um, you know, you do kind of take the chance that maybe these kind of get pushed onto the bag or whatever and then end up coming out. So the best thing to do is to keep them in a DPN holder. You can find these on Etsy, but I'm telling you, there's, if you have the materials, they're super easy to make. So all you are going to need is fabric and some type of button. So I have these little plastic buttons um, that I had purchased a while back on Amazon. I believe you do usually have to get the, the clamper thing to put these on. But if you feel like you do a lot of little projects like this that need little snappies, then it's definitely worth it, I think. Um, so you'll just need two of these and then a set of fabric. So you can pretty much use whatever fabric you want. Of course, cotton or linens is probably going to be better. Or even if you have like an old pair of jeans and you want to make like a denim one, that would be really nice. You want it to have a little bit of structure to it because ultimately it's going to be holding your project. So you don't want to use like a jersey or a silk or something like that. So I'm using the same fabric that I used for my other DPN holder. These are just two um, things of cotton that I had gotten at Joanne's Fabrics. And so I cut out one of each. So now what I typically do is I'm going to take my project. This is the easy, easiest way to do it, I think, um, if you have a project already that are on DPNs. Um, unless you just kind of want to guess. <laughs> you don't want to just like take your single needle and measure it out because you're going to be like oh wow that's like way too big right but ultimately it's almost like you're doing two because now this project and now of course the this is going to be folded over right you know so you want it to kind of be big enough it, it's okay if it sticks out you know a little bit like if it sticks out like that right you know uh, take into consideration you're probably going to sew you know a quarter inch in and then when you end up like reversing it and redoing the seam you're probably going to end up losing about like this much of it anyways right on each side um so anyway so just kind of keep that in mind i would probably do like at least a quarter to a half an inch longer than like the body of your project that you're doing um and then yeah, and then you're going to want to obviously fold it over, right, and make sure that it can kind of encompass your project. And you're going to want to put the buttons on the sides of the project. But anyway, so keep that in mind, too, that you want to have it long enough to where you can button it on the side of the project. And that's what's going to kind of help it to not move around in your bag. So I want mine to be a little bit larger because not only am I doing this, but I want to keep in mind that this DPN holder, you know, could also be used for sleeves as well if I want to use DPNs on sleeves, which I will be on this um, spring sorrel top. I'll be using my DPNs on the sleeves. So you're just going to need two pieces. Sorry, my toddler came in here. Two pieces same exact size and so hi Bubba so now what I'm going to do is I now you can pin this or whatever if you just want to secure it I'm just going to go ahead I'm going to sew all the way around yeah, I love it. yeah and I'm just going to leave a little opening somewhere you yeah. can either leave the opening closer to yeah, here if you don't want it to be seen you want it to be a little bit more discreet or yeah. sometimes it's just easiest to leave the opening here. Yeah. Um, and then I'm going to flip it inside out and iron it down and then fold it over and add yeah. the buttons. And it is as simple as that. So let's go ahead and get sewing. Yeah. Okay, so I have sewn all the way around and I did just leave a little space. Where is it? I just left a little space like right here. Um, and then just snip that. So now like usual i mean if you're watching this sewing tutorial you probably have sewn a little bit 
I'm just going to cut off my corners just so it's not super bulky. I'm just gonna. All right, this might be easier if you have like a little, what are they called? A wooden dowel. I don't know if that's the proper term. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and iron this down. Yeah. So that is going to be the front that shows and this it'll be the inside of the DPN case. So let me go ahead and iron it down. Once I iron it down, I'll, I'll, I won't show you guys because it's, it's simple enough, right? You iron it down and then you're going to want to sew this shut. I think it's more of an, ext an aesthetic thing at this point, whether when you close this up, you want to do a, I always call it like a suit stitch. I don't know why. Yeah, because I think of tailoring when yeah. I see like the little stitch that kind of runs along hem marks and things like that. So anyway, so you can go ahead and do a, you know, a straight stitch all the way around yeah. just for aesthetic purposes. But of course you don't have to. Um, I will though, just because I kind of like the way that it finishes. And I feel like, you know, it just kind of helps to keep this shut. Even if you iron it really well, if you ever want to wash it in the future or something like that, that stitch will help to kind of keep that down. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and iron it and then I'm going to do a straight stitch around and then we'll yeah. come back and we will figure out where we're placing the buttons. I'll show you how I put the buttons and then we will close it up and see the finished project. Okay, so once now I am done sewing, has a nice little seamed finish here. So now we are going to add the buttons. So with these, you're going to need four of these pokey ones. You're going to need two of, I guess they call them the male side and two of the female side. And let's go ahead and see where we need to put them. Um, now, when you do buy the clamp tool, it usually comes with um, this to kind of help to pierce um, an initial hole, and then this will be the clamp, so I'll show you how to do that. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, <laughs> tricky, my yarn is, of course, connected here, so let's go ahead and kind of measure out. We are just going to want to be folding this in half really. I'm more so using my project um, as a gauge for um, where I'm putting the buttons on the side. So let me go ahead. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to iron this in half here um, just so I can get a nice crease. Okay, so I went ahead and just um, ironed this down so it just has a nice seam here. So it looks like if I put my project in there or on there, you want to be more precise, obviously. Okay, so we have, it looks like our thing, our DPN case is roughly four inches. So ultimately eight inches wide, like once everything is sewn down. So if you wanted to do it right in the center, right, we could do about two inches and just do it like one little dot up. So let's see how much is that in. It's roughly about an inch and a half. So it's about right here. Of course, it's probably not perfect, but it's good enough. So I'm really just going to go you know, poke a little hole. Easy enough. And now you can match your buttons like here since the front. Let's go ahead and put a blue one on there. Yeah, you can use the same color buttons or whatever, but I don't think it's really necessary. Let's be fun and get a different color inside. Okay, so we have um, the male side on this top button. There's a little inside that little thing. You could probably you can kind of see it, right? There's like a little piece of metal in that like yellow rubber that's going to push down the pokey bit. So I want to get that in there so that that metal piece can push down the pokey part. See? So it pushed that down. All right, so now obviously we want our buttons to line up. So just the best I can. I mean, this is all I do is I just kind of go here. I'm like, okay, about right there. 
Okay, so I'm just making a little hole. Gonna wanna take one of these pokey ones. Now we're gonna put a female side. What is that, a green? So let's go ahead and do a green. There we go. And again, you want the little yellow rubber to be on top so you can push down that pokey bit. And honestly, I know it seems like this is relatively easy, but you do actually want to pay attention because there's been a few times where I've put two male sides by accident. And then it's, these are so frustrating um, to take off. All right. So you see here, got that. So then that should shut. And now, of course, it doesn't matter whether you put the um, female side on the top button or whatever. I mean, because technically it's like whatever you choose to be the top and bottom it doesn't really matter just as long as they are opposites let's go ahead and get our project put away because i am done knitting for the day i need to start cooking dinner so what i like to do is i like to have my project hanging out the bottom i like to put my needles on top of my buttons and then my fifth needle or fourth needle, if you like doing more of a triangle, I usually, I, maybe some people would be scared to do this. You might ruin something or pull, but I kind of just, just kind of put it in there like that. I mean, more than likely, you're not going to hurt your project. And then you just want to make sure as you're folding it, you are folding over your needles. And bam. You've got yourself a little DPN case, or a in this case, a large DPN case to hold your precious project that you do not want to lose your stitches on because if you do, <laughs> you would be very mad at yourself as to why you didn't just make a really easy DPN case or buy one for, from Etsy. I think they're probably pretty cheap. I mean, I can't imagine people are selling these for very much. So anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this little tutorial. So let me know if you like little things like this. Maybe I can teach you guys how to make like little project bags and stuff as well. Um, I'm actually, I'm going to be getting ready to make a project bag here shortly um, because along with this cast it on project as soon as i get my knitting for olive yarn i will be casting on a new project for my daughter's handmade wardrobe um, so i'm going to need to make a little project bag so maybe i can make a video for that so um you know like this video and subscribe and leave comments or whatever on what kind of little sewing projects you might like to see all right talk to you guys later assalamu alaikum